All right, everybody, welcome on in, welcome on in. Um, I'm Stacy Sargent with Restoration Made Simple, and you are here for a Do You Even Call Conversion Edition. So when we talk call conversion, that means a lead comes in on your phone. It might be from your organic Google SEO, it might be from some sort of pay-per-click or pay-per-call. It might be a referral from a plumber. And what we generally have to do is convert that lead twice, right? First, we have to convert it on the phone so that you can get technicians or project manager or somebody in the home. And then we have to usually close the job on site unless this is TPA work or something and they've already signed um, before the technicians get there. But the first conversion we have to do is going to be on the phone, right? So we're gonna go through a couple of steps here. The first thing that I think is super important that you do is track your lead sources so you know where their calls are coming from. Um, this is an example of a company that we work with after a few months, he had um, several referral sources working for him, right? So he was part of a BNI group. He was running some SEO. Um, he had a couple of plumbers that were referring him work. He was using Angie Leads, Thumbtack, um, just word of mouth, that type of thing. And so this was a simple Excel sheet where he would track his referral source, uh, make sure that he knew where those leads were coming from. And then every month he would identify how much he was bringing in from those referral sources. So that would let him know whether or not he had a good return on investment for those referral sources. Um, that's really going to come into play um, with a lot of these different pay-per-call or pay-per-click campaigns that you're running, right, or other things. And so it's really important that we track your lead sources. So the first thing I want to make sure that you're doing is you have a way to do that. My recommendation is to use some type of call tracking service. Um, we've had a lot of success with CallRail. You get a monthly plan with however many lines you think you're going to need, right? And I think you're going to start out with somewhere around $50. Don't quote my prices. They change all the time. But I think for a general plan where you're going to get upwards of 12 lines, um, you're going to pay around $50. And again, those prices change all the time. But what I do know is that they're always pretty reasonable. And so anytime we started a new marketing um, source, um, whether that is a Google guarantee ad, whether it's a website, whether it is a plumber that refers us a lot of work, we would always get that specific marketing line its own phone number. We would assign it its own phone number. And something that you can do through a service like CallRail is put a whisper at the beginning of the phone call, right? So for example, this first line that we have up here is a Google Guarantee ad that we run in Denver, um, and it has its own number. So when that phone rings and I pick it up, it will say Denver Google Guarantee, right? And then I really know and am better prepared to respond to whoever is on that other line. Um, and then also what that does, it allows me to track where those calls come from. So if I had, you know, for example, let's go back to this um, owner that we had right here. If his BNI group, his as all of his SEO marketing um, campaigns all of his plumbers, his Angie leads, his Thumbtack leads, and everything else all have the same number when they called in. He might not ne necessarily know whether to refer that lead and put it on under his SEO referral or you know his Angie's referral. So it's really important that you have a way to assign each marketing source its own phone number and then follow up with putting that whisper at the beginning of the ad. One other reason I think it's really important to know what call you're taking is because every lead source you're not necessarily paying the same amount of money for and so you're not taking in the same type of leads. For example, my Google guarantee under water damage restoration, right, it has water, fire, sewage, roofing, um, plumbing, uh, mold inspection, mold removal, but you have an opportunity to choose which of those services you're going to market to. So if I choose water, I choose sewage, and I choose fire, if when I pick up that call, it says 
Google guarantee and the person says, I have mold, I need somebody to come out and inspect. Even though we do inspect mold, I don't want to pay anywhere from 150 up to $400 for a mold inspection. So all I have to say on that call is, I'm sorry, we don't do mold inspection. We're not able to help you. Hang up. And then Google Guarantee is not going to charge me for that lead. Okay. But if I don't know that I'm not running mold inspection ads um, and I just pick up the phone, hello, I don't know that it's coming from my Google Guarantee, I'm going to pay $150 to $400 for that mold inspection that we know has a very small conversion rate a lot of the time, right? So that just gives you another opportunity to number one, be prepared to answer the phone call appropriately so we have a better success rate with closing that job on site and also ensuring that it's a job we wanna take. And so we're paying the right money for the types of leads that we're receiving. All right, so I highly recommend you have a way to track and assign each of your marketing sources their own phone number Put a whisper at the front of that phone so you're better prepared to answer that call. You know what types of leads you're accepting from that marketing source. And then with that data, you can put together a nice monthly spreadsheet of your referral sources, right? The type of job that you're getting from them, how much money you're bringing in from them. And then you can make decisions on which of these marketing campaigns is bringing you a good return on investment or which of these marketing campaigns you want to put more money into, right? Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is just some phone success standards, right? It's really important to know who is answering your phones. Um, when we answer those phone calls, we should have a 911 dispatcher mentality, right? We're making sure we get appropriate information. We're treating their call um, with urgency because chances are this might be the first type of water loss that they've ever had. And so for them, they're largest investment usually, which is their home or their business, right, is having a water intrusion or a water invent. So it's very important that we treat that with urgency, just like the urgency that it has for them, right? At the same time, we can calm them down, let them know that this is normal for us, right? We handle that all the time, right? Whether or not they're calling with an insurance or potentially a self-pay, you can help them either way. Don't require them to make that decision on the phone right then. If it's Friday evening and Mr. Smith is calling and he's saying, I can't get a hold of my insurance company until Monday, so maybe we should just hold off until then, right? It's your job to say, Mr. Smith, we completely understand. We deal with this all the time. The insurance company is going to want you to have somebody come in, extract that water, and mitigate any additional damages, right? And then we can help you contact them on Monday, decide whether or not this is a claim or not. Either way, we can help you, okay? That's an excellent way to respond to that on the phone. The next one. Give them something to do because as soon as you hang up, let's say they give me a call at 10 o'clock, I tell them we'll have a team of technicians out there between 12 and 2, right? Um, they have an hour, at least an hour on their hands. They might try to find somebody who can be out there at 1130, right? Find somebody who's there faster. So generally, I will give them something to do and let them know I will call them back in three to five minutes. You know, Mr. Smith, um, I have two crews that are out in your area. Let me give them a call, find out which one is closer. I will give you a call back in three to five minutes so that you know who's going to come out on site for you, okay? Generally, that will keep them um, from making some additional calls, like going back online and looking for other companies, right? Or um, one that has worked really well, I have a client who started doing this and I really loved it is that she said, I'm going to call my technicians. I will get them in route. Um, why I'm doing that. Would you mind taking some pictures for me and sending me a text message so that I have a better understanding of the damage in the home or a better understanding of the affected materials. And uh, that's a great way to um, keep clients off the phone, give them something to do. Right. 
ask them to secure any valuables, right? Um, we'll have technicians there um, in the next one to two hours while you're waiting for them to arrive. You know, don't worry, they'll take care of everything once they get there. But if you have any valuables um, in the affected areas or something like that, go ahead and secure them just so that you have peace of mind, right? Um, and then finally, the last thing um, to really think about is, is take the time on the phone to gauge the lead and filter to avoid wasting time and money. And we're going to talk about how to kind of qualify or validate that lead in the first 30 seconds of the phone call here in a minute. So that's what it is. Number three is qualify the lead. For a lot of your lead sources, like I talked about, um, you know, your Google guarantee, um, 33 mile radius, those types of things, um, there is an opportunity for that lead to be disputed as not valid, but you're going to have to do some work in the first 30 seconds of the phone call. And that is going to be qualify the lead, right? So these are generally the first four questions I ask. Um, you get a phone call. It's uh, Mrs. Johnson. She's like, I just went down into my basement and I have about an inch of standing water. I think my hot water heater um, burst or I think I have a drain back up in my laundry room. And you say, OK, don't worry about that. We handle that all the time. Um, Mrs. Johnson, are you the property owner? If the answer is yes, you can move forward with them. If it isn't, if they're a renter, right, or potentially their property manager, um, you might have to ask a couple of additional questions, right? If they're the property manager, do you have the authority to sign for work to be done on the property, okay? And if they're a renter, you know, we can't do work for them if they can't sign. And so the, the answer there might be, I'm so sorry, we can only work directly with the property owner. Um, you have your landlord give me a call, your property manager give me a call, and be happy to come out and take care of that for you. Okay. Um, the next one is what city are you in? Notice I don't say what is your address because that's not important right now. I just need to know if they're in my service area, right? So what city are you in? Um, we're in Atlanta, Georgia. That's great. We work in Atlanta all the time. I have four crews in your area right now. Okay. Find out what was the cause of the loss. You know, what is the source of the loss? Um, I had a leak under my kitchen sink. I just noticed it. Okay, has the water been turned off? Have you been able to stop the water? Has the water been turned off? Has the plumber already been there? If water is no longer coming in, obviously there's no issue with you going out. If water is still coming in, that would give you the opportunity to give them um, a referral partner or something if you need a plumber. If they have water coming in through the roof, if you do emergency tarping, you're able to go out and do that. If they need a roofer, you should have a referral partner available for them, right? If this is coming from something like a Google guarantee and you don't want to pay, you know, that $200 to refer them your roofer, then the correct response would be, you know, I'm so sorry, we don't do roofing. Um, we're not able to service you, right? That means you won't have to pay for that lead with Google guarantee, right? And then you can call them right back and refer your roofing referral partner if you want, okay? And then the next question would be, when did the loss happen, right? Because if the loss happened two weeks ago, you know, are there still wet materials or do you just need the build back, right? And if they still have affected materials, great. If they don't have any affected materials and they just want somebody to come out and refinish their kitchen floors, right, then potentially that isn't a valid lead for you, depending on the referral source that this lead is coming from. So all of that can happen in the first, you know, 15 to 30 seconds. And then if you've qualified them as a valid lead, then you can move forward. Okay. So really important here that whoever is answering your phone, we go back to that success standard. Whoever is answering your phone needs to be trained properly um, to handle that phone call. If you want additional help on this, get with me. Um, Restoration Made Simple. Give me a call, message me. I'm happy to help you with this. Or you can just go to our website, Restoration Made Simple, and we have a call conversion course. This is incredible. So we go through 13 really important strategies to help you answer and be successful on those calls. But I think the real 
um, kind of benefit to this program are these 13 actual water leads that we have recorded, right? And you'll see by the actual call um, what that call is in reference to, and you will hear us walk through that call. We'll stop the call several times just to give you some tips, explain to you why we answered it that way, what is maybe a different way that you can answer it, um, but it's excellent. So if you have somebody answering your phones just because they answered phones for, you know, a mortgage broker or they answered phones, you know, at an auto dealership or they answered phones, you know, at a, at a call center, um, doesn't mean that they're trained to answer your phones. You know that as a water damage provider, one of your biggest dispenses, you know, outside of, um, you know, your, your payroll, then maybe your equipment maintenance or buying your equipment or purchasing new vehicles is going to be how you acquire your leads. Right. And so it is super important that you understand that the more leads you can close on the phone, the more jobs you have to go out to. Right. Which a lot of times we don't need to throw more money at our marketing. We just need to make sure that we're converting right? The most leads possible. So a lot of times if I'm working with the owner and they're like, Stacy, we need to get additional leads in here. I say, okay, what percentage of your leads are you closing right now on the phone? Nine out of 10, they don't know. And they don't have a way of tracking to get me the data so that they do know. So super important, right? Find a way to give each marketing source a phone number, Use a system like Call Rail so that you can put a whisper at the beginning of that phone number and record your leads so that you can put all that data together and look monthly at where are these leads coming from, right? And where do I have the opportunity to convert more of the leads that I'm already paying for? That is the way that you can really, right, increase the return on investment for your marketing dollars.